Hello, and welcome to Pod Rocket. Uh, I'm Kate. I am the producer of Pod Rocket. With me today is Noel. Hi, Noel. How's it going? Good, good. Thanks, Kate. And our guest is Travis Waithmeyer. Hi, Travis. How's it going? Going awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Travis is the creator of Bedrock Layout. And um, we were actually connected on uh, the Lunch Dev Discord. So uh, nice to see you somewhat in person. <laughs> it's amazing. To, we never get to see each other in real life nowadays, right? What well, is real life? Exactly. But yeah, just to get started, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Bedrock Layout? Yeah. Um, so Bedrock Layout, like I guess the elevator pitch would be it's the low dash of layout. <laughs> It's intended to be like a bunch of utility, um, simple um, primitives that allow you to then like compose them together and build much more complicated layouts and build not maybe every single layout, but it's surprising how many of the layout patterns we do on the web actually kind of fit within just a combination of like 10 different primitives. And we can you can achieve like 80% of what you're trying to do out there. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that's that's an interesting way of, of framing it. I like that, like the low dash of layout yeah, structure. Um, cool, yeah, because I, I feel like the initial question uh, one might have is like, why, why do, like now that we're in the world of flex and grid and stuff, why do I need helpers like to, you know, help me get my layouts looking looking good? I, it's way easier now than it used to be. Um, so like, what do you say to devs who kind of come at you with that, with that question? The in fact, the because it's so easy that I was even able to make these kind of like utility functions. They they were much more difficult to make prior, like the old Bootstrap when all we had were floats. You had like compose like your containers and your rows and then your columns. Like it was a lot more harder to get just even simple layouts because of the limitations. So yeah, like I one hundred percent agree. We do have more capabilities, and that's why these things even exist. But the uh i would say what the goal of bedrock layouts is it's 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 the same goal that like react gives to front end developers or angular or vue or svelte it's not that you couldn't write that javascript it's that it provides a layer where you don't have to recreate those same things over and over again and you can just get stuff out quickly and easily and and accurately for what you need to do just to get get your uh just like everything it's like it doesn't matter what we do most important thing is are we shipping to customers and the easier and better that is and the quicker we can do that the better so whatever tool you can use to help leverage that that's what this is it's just a tool to help you leverage getting layout completed and done and accurately Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So like, was that, was that the motivation originally was just to, to make, I guess, did you, did you find yourself writing the same code over and over again? And, and you were thinking like, man, it should be nice if this was abstracted and it was, it was kind of bored of that. Or did you see a need in the community for something like this? Or um, what was, what was the motivation originally? It's kind of, have you heard of revenge driven development? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I think I can intuit what it means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let me give you a little bit about this. I was prior to where I'm at now, I'm working for Anonymy Labs where we build like privacy solutions for businesses and customers. But prior to that, I was on a design system team and we were building the new design system. And the, we were, it, and it was really good. We were working really well with our, our, our head designer and getting a style guide and getting it codified. And this thing that this, this pattern that I've kind of always been doing naturally, we started just really building out and, and fully building out this whole layout concept. Um, Cause he, he, like a lot of good style guys, they have a, a good spacing scheme, but we started really emphasizing like this, these layout helpers and these tools that allowed us to, make that spacing scheme easier to be consistent in our designs. And I was really like, really a proud of it. And just also like the benefit of having it open source. It was closed source. And so I went and arranged a meeting, wanted to like try to get permission. I knew it was, it was an uphill battle to try to get it open source, but I still wanted to try it. And like, 
I was dismissed in like five minutes. Like I hadn't even been able to give him like my, my whole like, you know, sales pitch. It was just totally dismissed that like, no, we're never going to open source this thing. Like I was, I, I was distraught a little bit. Like that was, I was frustrated well, that I wasn't even given the time of day. And shortly after that, like it was, I had a vacation plan for, for Christmas just before the Christmas break. And so I just started taking the things that we were building as far as just layout concepts, ripping everything that had to do with the company out of it and just building this open source library. And the more and more I did it, the more and more I really appreciate the fact that like, this is something that's kind of missing in a lot of design systems out there. Like that there's like maybe a, a stat people have a stack component and then their 12 column grid components. And then after that, when you talk about layout, they talk about cards and then they go immediately to all these other things that more design system -y and, and, and are much more about like how things look, but there's really not this like one collection of just layout primitives that just, that's all it worries about. That's all they focus about. They don't try to create buttons. They don't try to create avatars or any of those other things. They're only focused on this. So I kind of really, f it just kept touch touching that this is actually something that is like maybe a missing piece, not just for me, because I'm actually glad I'm doing this because it makes when I'm working on projects a lot easier. This is how I like to build. But there there's this missing piece in other people's systems, this consistent, like, like you said, modern CSS is really great. And so, but people recreate these same patterns over and over again, every single time they want to do something when they could easily just be bringing in bedrock or something similar. If someone else wants to build something just like it, that would be fine. But like they could be bringing this in and using this to compose and build up their layouts in these simple primitive forms. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. I mean, that, that kind of brings up an interesting point. So say you're a dev and you're using like, you know, you, you want to do as little front end work as possible, right? Like in the spirit of I don't want to write code, I don't have to have to write um, to do basic things. And say you're already using like a component library for something like buttons or cards, like you mentioned. Um, and it has like formatting helpers in there already. Do you think there's still room in projects like that where you're using like a pretty opinionated front end component library to use something um, like a layout primitive library that how I built it and the way it's evolved. I have built it with the intention that it does have its own, some good default opinions, mm -hmm. but it's intended to be overridden. And mm -hmm. so you can bring it in, you can override it with your spacing scheme, yours. So that way it can, and then each of these primitives have zero styling uh, that has, has, that are not related to just layout. So that way, if they needed at, to be brought in to wrap all your cards and, and lay them out in a grid, or if you needed to um, stack things, what, whatever it is that you're trying to do with these components, it's intended that they work despite the fact that you're using maybe Tailwind or or you're using um, Chakra or, or Material, or whatever it is that you want to use. Or your own proprietary one. Um, I know like one company is already brought in as kind of the, their de facto layout scheme. Clavio has brought it in with theirs, and they're using it with their design system internally. So that's always what it was intended to be: is that you can bring in your spacing scheme and overwrite the default one. Nice, nice, yeah, very cool. Um, do you think like there's? I guess yeah, we. we we're talking about you know, how like CSS is powerful um, and we can do a lot with it. Are, are there are there shortcomings in CSS in particular that you think Bedrock really helps solve? Still, like this would like there's components um, that are giving you like form or structure that is really hard to do with CSS just natively. The I think what's still really hard CSS is still a very low level um, language. And when you're trying to think high level, what you're trying to do, like to do that, you have to think about like, well, here's three or four different properties I have to put together to get to achieve that. And so you start thinking about like, in terms of low level, like 
code rather than what it is that you're trying to do conceptually at a high level. And that makes it hard to then communicate that back to designers and product managers who are maybe less technical, especially if they're less technical. Um, Cause they're, they're just saying, Hey, we want to put this out in a grid. Well, at, what does that mean? Like to put it on a grid, what does it mean when you start shrinking it? And so you start having these conversations, they know what they mean. And then you have to start thinking, well, what do I, what do I need to do to achieve that? And you start getting in, into the technical and anytime that there's that layer of like, we have to try to translate. There's a lot op- definitely opportunities for you to have some miscommunication where when you're like, Hey, I want this to, to be like this a cover layout here. And you can create that, those same like com- conversations, like this is a cover layout and we're going to have something on top and we want this item vertically centered. It automatically comes with some understandings of what a cover layout is or what a real layout. And, and you create this opportunity to ha- create the same conversation between mm-hmm. your, your designers and product owners and, and the actual developers. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It, given like kind of coming on a, Make, like expanding the vocabulary is probably super yeah. helpful for a lot of people. Like, um, do you think, I guess, have you seen any instances where, where companies are using kind of design tools um, like Figma and its ilk uh, to try to like kind of capture what we're, what, what you're doing with bedrock and then like, okay, this is, this is a consistent pattern that we can use um, and like applying that to app development. That. That was something we were working on on our with our design system team before I left. Was like, how do we try to create these? Like, they were using Adobe. Um, well, I can't remember the tool. The one, the Figma equivalent <laughs> made by Adobe. I can't XD or something like that. Um, but yeah, we were building like these these. They were building out these primitives that they were going to give out to their designers that that created that that same concept, like these these spacing primitives that allowed made it easier to redline products. So then it was a lot easier for developers. So uh, that would be a great next step. And if I like, I had like some big sponsors and some, some people helping me, that would be actually a natural flow where I would want to take this is to then like, how do we build like some, some design tools that complement and work with this. But unfortunately this is just me in my spare time (laughs) working on this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think kind of, Kate, we'll get into that a little bit later, like, you know, time management and building a community and all that stuff. Um, but kind of while we're in here in the, in the weeds a little bit more, um, I'm curious. So, so say, you know, you've got like an existing React app. You have some components that are helping you with styling to kind of or making that abstraction at the component layer. You've got just some CSS selectors that are doing a lot of heavy lifting for you to try to like make your grids and your flex do what it's supposed to do. How would one kind of go about starting to, you know, rip that out and replace it with something that's doing that abstraction, um, you know, like for you? Uh, like, to ha- so essentially, how would you start integrating Bedrock into an existing app like that? You know, that's a very good question. So, yeah, look, like I said, it's intended to work with your your system. I would say probably the biggest thing is to have the right mindset about layout. And and this is maybe a little bit of a tangent, but I think this is one an opportunity where there is a little bit of miseducation to, for lack of a better word, about CSS. Um, and, and maybe miseducation isn't even the right word, more of like a not a proper explanation of like what CSS is for. CSS has two parts in my mind. They're very related, but they're two separate enough that I think they should be considered separately. One is making it look nice, making it beautiful, making it like have the right colors and the the box shadows and all that, the animations. And the other one is layout. And even though that is visual, it's also structural in a way, not semantic, not in the way that like maybe screen readers or things like that understand it, but it is structural in the sense that like, by putting, making this larger or putting it in this corner, communicate something specific. And so I think, A, that's one important way is to, to start like kind of separating those as two different related, but two different, um, what's the word? Concerns. Separation of concerns. I don't want to keep going down there. I'm not, no, I don't want to like, try to start telling people every they have to create separate CSS files for every single 
layout versus whatever. But like start thinking those as they are different concerns. I say that's probably the biggest thing um, that would help you no matter what, whether you bring in bedrock or not. That if you start thinking about layout as a separate concern from from the be- like the beauty and the decoration, that that will help out any React app or any app in general. And then the other one, then there's always the the regular advice: build new things with it. As you touch old things, maybe start bringing it out. But I would say you can go a step further: is like really trying to understand like what it is high level you're trying to achieve. And uh, because most of us, if I don't know about you, know like most of the time when I write CSS, like and a lot of us write this, it's the stick on the, it's the mud sticking on the wall strategy where you're like, like. Or actually, I, I to, admittedly, I'll bring things into debt. I'll put some random things on there just to get it into to Chrome or Firefox. And then I'll do all the styling, inline styles in in the web. And then when I get it to look the way I want, copy, paste, put it into the class. You know, how often have do we do it like that without even maybe understanding why some of the properties exist and why we need to have them in the way we do? Um, anyway, so yeah, like... Just start really understanding like what is layout, what is the layout, what is it overall high level what I'm trying to achieve, and then understanding like can I achieve that with a combination? For the most part, you're it's usually never going to be just one of these primitives. You're probably going to bring in at least two or three into any situation to achieve the layout you want. Gotcha. Yeah, so when you say bring in primitives, are you saying like t- typically people would you'd still end up using some of those like CSS layout, you know, selectors and tools with Bedrock? Or, or are you suggesting like, hey, Bedrock should have most of the pieces you need for the most part. So it's like just combining those in the right way. I Like I said, like it, it's kind of like there's the there's that, that, that cliche statement where it's like you can achieve 80 percent, you know, with like 20 percent of the things. That's mm-hmm. what Bedrock is trying to do. It you can achieve like 80% of the layouts you want. And then when you can't, that's when you drop down a level, go back to the CSS or if you're using Tailwind, use Tailwind or whatever, but like drop right. down to the, to the, to the C I think it's Tailwind is kind of like half a step up from like CSS. It's not a full on like framework. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I would definitely say like, um, yeah, like when when you need to achieve those like very unique things that are very app specific or very page specific, yeah, you you'll probably like trying to do that with Bedrock might, or in, in several cases, be like more complicated because you're trying to use it in a way it was intended. It's supposed to mm-hmm. be the the common use cases, not your one off use cases. Yeah, yeah. I, I, going back to what you, what you opened with of like the Lodash. <laughs> For layouts, web layouts is like a good way to frame it because I feel like that's kind of how it how it's always positioned itself as well, right? Like you can't do everything here, but you have building blocks, use them, chain them together, make cool stuff. Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah, nice, nice. So I guess maybe to, to help kind of bring this around to contextualize it, like maybe it'd be good to explain, like say you've got a React app, you want to start using using these layouts. How how does that look? Like what do I have to do to you know make my grid like translate it from a like a, a CSS grid with some selectors to make the grid stuff happen. How do I get that operating in um, bedrock mode? Yeah, we'll we'll take specifically that. Like, and and that's the fun. That's the unfortunate and fun thing. There's the con, there's a CSS grid, the technology, and then there's grid the pattern <laughs> where you want to put things in a grid. <laughs> so it's always like fun whenever. Unfortunately, that's one of the unfortunate mishaps. I don't know if there's a better term for CSS grid, but like there's that's always been like one of the <laughs> annoying things about communicating between designers and, and developers all the time. It's like, okay, do you mean grid this or that? But yeah, if you were to go on the website, it's bedrock layout.dev. There you can see there's like a grid and it's intended to to do that, that, that typical like card layout where like you have some columns and when they they, they take up a minimum width, but they can expand to f- to fill out. And then when they start running out of room, they'll start collapsing and, and, and optimize those columns for for the room that's given. The um, It's intended entirely just whenever possible that they just wrap 
or or take over like for example if that was like a section uh, and i'm talking like html semantically that you could bring that in and you can say it has an as pro- all of them have as properties so you can say this is a section so that way we're not like creating div soups around our html whenever possible though you can go you can make sure you're using the correct semantic html and then it's a matter of just like setting the gutter property so that way you can tell what spacing that you use and then in in the case of the grid it also has a minimum item width so you can declare hey each of these cards need to take up at least this amount of space before we start re- collapsing and bring things down to separate rows well, i was going to say under the hood is using a common pattern like that gets talked about with css grid all the time um i think like if you go some people call it the 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 ram pattern or whatever but where it's doing the auto fit and and the and the min max and all that stuff it's not like that's something that would have been super hard to write but it's a pattern that like you have to recreate every single time if you could just go i just need to do a grid bring this in and now your your html your your react component says grid like the component actually is a grid component. You can be like, okay, this is a grid. Everything inside of here are grid items. It's much right. more apparent like what you're trying to do. And you don't have to recreate that same pattern over and over again. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, because I, f- I feel like I'm, I'm kind of in that same boat where I'm, I'm not writing fresh like CSS layouts enough to even remember a lot of the time what I need to do. It's like, oh, I, I know like there's some selectors in here that are pretty close and I go and figure it out. I'm like, okay, but it takes like 20 minutes for me to get spun up again. So I feel like if there were nice components, you know, like there that can kind of do that for me, abstract it in the same way that Lodash does, right? Like I don't, I don't have to think about it. I know the Lodash helper to do what I need to do. Um, yeah, so that's super cool. Were you also saying that there, there was a way that you could wire up like existing components so you didn't have to write like a, an extra wrapper div around like each of your inner components? Exactly. Each one of the uh, each one of the bedrock components takes the as prop. It's that it's a pattern where like you can pass in either a string like and say, hey, this is an HTML or this is an anchor tag or whatever it is. They're all divs by default. Um, or you can even like as long as it takes your component takes a class name, you can pass in an existing component you have. So if you have like like material has their their like paper or you know different things like that, like it if there's something that you want to already to internally also have these layout patterns, but it's got its own like styles or whatever that you want to just bring in, there are components that already exist. You can pass those in as well using the as prop it's built on top of uh, style components. And so style components just gives these things out of the box. That's one of the reasons why we were using it in our design system, as well as why I can still cap it for bedrock. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah. You know, I feel like that probably helps a lot in keeping, keeping the like kind of the, the tree a little bit cleaner, like having, you know, fewer, fewer branches than, or having exactly, exactly as many branches as needed is always good. Um, yeah. So I think kind of my last, my last line of questioning here is <laughs> say, say, say you're in a dev shop or whatever, you got your app and you, you're pretty happy with what you've got going. You kind of, you know, you're, you got some, some components yourself to help you with formatting. You got like some you know, CSS doing some heavy lifting for you manually, class names and stuff. Um, is there any advantage you see of going back and like kind of retrofitting one of those apps to use like a kind of a layout primitive library like Bedrock? Um, I am pra- I am a very practical demo, and I'm like unless and, and this is m- how I try to follow abstractions or anything I do unless it solves a problem like probably not. I, let's just be frank. Like if you've got something that's working it's probably not worth the time to go in and refactor it just to get zero. Unless there's a problem that you're having, if your CSS is like spaghetti CSS and anytime you try to add to it that you're having a problem. Yeah, maybe it would. But like, if you've got like, like you said, like it's a well working app, maybe it won't, doesn't make sense to go like recreate, re do every single component. So they're using bedrock, but that's just more of like from a practical, like, like, yeah, don't don't create more work for yourself if you don't need to. It's all about getting features out. Ultimately, it all comes down to the users, and the user doesn't care if you're using a, a layout library or you're writing one 
everything from scratch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I appreciate the uh, I don't know, pragmatism there. Yeah, um, <laughs> I feel like it's always it's always tricky for devs, right? Like, like, oh, like you know, you always feel like you've done everything wrong. Like, do I have to start <laughs> over and use all these other tools? Um, well, and the, the, it's yeah. the, there's the FOMO. There's like, oh, this is so cool. Why have I been doing this other way? And you just want to start using it, but like, if you don't have a real practical need for it, like. It, yeah, it sometimes makes sense just keep on the path you're going. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But if if you're coming in fresh, yeah, like it, it's super cool. I, I played with it a little bit. I spun up a sample project, um, kind of just to see. And yeah, I found I found some of these components. I did find some of them that, that were like this would be really hard to do, and I don't feel like a lot of people have abstracted abstracted a lot of like spacer components out. Um, the spacer components that Bedrock gives you, um, like the real I thought was really cool. Like like snapping uh, like you know, divs into view. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm just saying this because even if you're a dev and you feel like you've got, you know, really good CSS chops and everything's working, I think there is still some stuff there that like is really cool and could be useful on its own just to solve some specific need. Um, I have and I kind of try to write it in a way to, that like, if you only want to bring in one or two of these into your app and you ne- you don't need to bring all of them in. Like if you want to like just download just the inline or just like the cover, whatever, and nothing else, you can do that. I, in fact, I actually like kind of put off until more recently creating like your one, one component to rule them all. And, but you can now, like there is a package called um, primitives that has basically all the primitives as a dependency, it brings it in and you can, uh, and you can get it from one source just cause that's an easy, that's a good developer experience, especially if you're going to go full on, and adopt this and use it. That's a really good developer experience. But like I pushed that off till the kind of like near the tail end of this after I felt like I had a really good like system of layouts that you could bring in just with the preference of like, I let's not create more room than I need to on people's bundle sizes, if, whatever possible. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Um... Yeah, yeah, it's it's good to think about. And I, I agree. I, I kind of been in that. I've been in that space before. Where it's like, oh, should I make this also just like exports everything, and it's easy to just like get the whole bundle because it makes dev dev that much easier. Um, but I also understand pushing that off till the end. Um, cool. Yeah. So I guess maybe this is a good uh, segue, Kate, for like, say you're in this position of you're wanting to start writing from scratch and like doing your own layout stuff or you're figuring out how to even do layouts on some app you're building. Um, you know, like where, where might people go to, to figure that out? So, I mean, the, the best thing place, and I, I've really been emphasizing, I probably over the last year, I've been getting some features out, some random things, but probably the biggest thing I've been focusing on is getting the document site up. Um, and, and more than just like, here's the API, but really trying to give a good tutorial and, and a much more thorough explanation. Um, and so, yeah, if once again, bedrock-layout.dev there. It's built using Storybook, um, which was a practical decision because I was already building Storybook so I could do some visual regression. Because with with a layout library, it's less about like how you technically got there because there's so many ways to skin the cat with CSS. And especially as they come out with, with new features and, and CSS in general is kind of hitting a good stride finally where they can they're getting out features on a regular basis the browsers are all kind of aligned partly we've had some consolidation of browsers um but it, it in general like the css working group has kind of now gone through the same thing that the job tc39 has for javascript where they're now getting features out on a regular basis they're able to respond to the community it, pretty quickly so the best way to achieve a layout today might be different tomorrow. Um, and even for example, gap came to flex, like a lot of these like components, like the inline components were using the negative margin hack. If, if you know what I'm talking about, where you, you create this wrapper component with negative margin and then you put margin around everything and that negative margin would absorb the outside margin. So you get that gutter feel basically it's recreating the gap. Well, now gap exists, so we don't need that under the hood. And, and so that's my intention with all these layouts is like it, you shouldn't need to know what technology is being used under the hood. You just need to know that it achieves this layout. And if, if I find a better way to do it using something else that 
you shouldn't like write your CSS or write your components knowing how it's technically written under the hood, even though you can probably figure it out. The uh, like, so getting started, I would say go to the website, go through those and try to understand like what these layout patterns are, what they're trying to achieve and how you can combine them. And like, if you find, I, I'm open to like, probably the biggest thing I need now is like some really good examples of how to achieve different layouts um, and, and how to achieve common patterns. I'm starting to build that out. The once again, given that it's mostly just me and my free time, that's, that's when I get or kind of get some opportunity to go about doing that. Um, but I would say the, my biggest need is like that document site is, is where I would love to get some help, some contribution, um, just showing how to use these in the wild, how to achieve your layouts that you've done in the past and bring those in and show other people basically recipes for lack of better term. How do you like, here's how to achieve your typical card layout and using these combinations, things like that. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a good chance to talk about um, your course on new line, uh, creating layouts in react. Um, can you just kind of tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of what's maybe what's covered and um, kind of who, who is that uh, kind of targeted at that, that course? So the, yeah, the new line I got, I got um, brought in uh, the, one of the founders, Nate, I can't remember his, his last name right now, but Nate, um, Nate Murray over, he's one of the founders over at new line, saw the bedrock really liked what it was. He's like, I bet there's something you could teach here, given that you've built this and let's, let's have a conversation. And we initially kind of started about like, maybe we can create a course on how to use it. But as we got into it more, like the thing I felt that was a lacking in my own CSS education, specifically for react um, was like how to use CSS and react in a way that doesn't like conflict. Um, because like React is the this component model where you kind of break things down to their smallest parts and then you build it back up and that's how you do it. Once again, it's that compositional model. But CSS A was designed to be kind of like much more high level, exception based. You start from the top, your general styles, and then you work down to more specific after you kind of figured that out. But also like the way we teach CSS is kind of like, at least for me, when I was going through was stuck in like 1999 where like it's, they always talk about the page and trying to like keep things like consistent across your web page, and, and no one talks about how to do it in a CSS model. And every, when you look up the doc site, React talks about, Hey, you have class name and you have style inline styles. And that's about all they go into. And you go to everybody else and they, they grab, Oh, well there's tooling that can help you manage your CSS. So there you can use SAS and you can use less. But like what they kind of all still lack is like, how do you create layouts in a way that allows you to compose them together? How do you write your CSS? How do you structure your properties in your classes? Like what properties go on which element so that you can have layouts that uh, you can have components that still compose together that don't like break as you bring them in. And that was, it was something like, after being a React developer for as long as I have, like I've learned that, but like that was something I had to just kind of figure out like where those boundaries are, where, where's that level of encapsulation. So that's what I decided to do is like focus more on like how to think, how to think about layout composition from a React point of view. In fact, the first module spends just 100% about what I call encapsulated CSS, which is the rules I've, I follow whenever I'm trying to build, use, write CSS and React. Um, and then from there, we then, the rest of the course, spend just recreating bedrock layouts. Um, and just to learn, like, what are those patterns? What are those low-level things that I use to achieve those patterns? So maybe, yeah, you don't bring in bedrock, but you now know these patterns that they're built on top of, so you can now use them in your own app. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, and we'll include uh, the link to that course um, in the show notes for sure. Um, and then, yeah, um, I wanted to ask, like, uh, you know, you're working on Bedrock. Um, 
we were connected uh, through the Lunch Dev Discord, which you're very active in. Um, you know, you, you stream on Twitch, you come on podcasts, you also have a full time job. I'm just kind of wondering, like, how do you have time for all of this? And, um, you know, how do you not get tired of all of this? <laughs> um, I, I don't get enough sleep. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, the, the, for lack, lack of better terms, I, the, the lunch dev is a, is a fantastic community. I highly recommend it to everybody out there. Uh, very highly support, especially if you're a content creator, but not just for them, but there's a lot of really good content creators in there who are very willing to like jump in and help. I got started on Twitch because Ben Myers over at some antics dev, um, he was already doing Twitch stream. I needed to find like a reason to jump in and force myself to get into bedrock. I was running into a situation where like I was updating the dependencies and that was about all I was doing on bedrock. And I, and I was, I was having a hard time and I was like, maybe what if I like live stream me working on bedrock once a week, that'll force me to actually go to bedrock at least once a week. And Maybe some other people will help me. If not, it'll, I'll at least force. It's my responsibility partner. If I schedule it, I will go do it. And he helped me kind of get started. And yeah, I do. That that's what I do now. Every once a week, I'll I'll live stream just whatever I'm happen to be working on with Bedrock. Um, sometimes I've gone off on tangents and like try to recreate different layouts using Bedrock, but for the most part, it's just like, how can I make this site better? How can I fix a bug? on the la- the website or how can I like, um, yeah, just whatever I just happen to be working on is whatever I stream and, and gotten some great, like people come in really helped me out. Um, Michael Chan came in there also known as Chantastic. Uh, he works for chromatic and he was helping, he helped me get the chromatic like CI working with, with GitHub actions. So that was, that was a, that was a fun day because like, I was having a hard time on my own. And, and that's what the intention is. Is like, I don't try to pretend like I'm a CSS guru. I'm not, I'm not Jen Simmons or like Rachel Andrews. These people who are like on the CSS working group. I'm just a dev who like found something that made my life easier. And, and I, I hope that's what my Twitch stream projects is like, I'm not smarter than anyone else. <laughs> um, just cause I, I wrote, wrote the library. I wrote the library because I would forget these things often. I kept having to Google them. So now I don't have to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we'll include uh, we'll include the links um, to uh, your Twitch stream and uh, Lunch Dev Discord in the show notes. Um, is there anything else that you would like to point our listeners to? Um, I do blog at um, it's non-traditional.dev. Um, it's kind of like not anything like layout related that specifically unless uh, it's something on my mind i wrote that with the because i came from a non-traditional background um i was original the uh compliance officer with a with a stockbroker license and all that and i've switched careers and now i'm i'm a, a developer and i remember that like especially when i was really new and i'm still learning a lot of things even though i had a job I was churning out things. There was just like terms or like just concepts that would get explained to me in a way that like, I just did, wasn't getting it. Cause I was come from a different background. And so I blog about whatever happens to be interesting to me, but I always try to focus on the fact that like my, the audience that I'm intending to write are people coming from non-traditional backgrounds. And so that's what I, I try to do is whatever technically I happen to be interested in writing about, but it's always from that perspective. Awesome. Yeah, I was listening to the um, FS Jam episode that you were on, and you were talking about um, because you were a musician before um, working in compliance. And Anthony was like, he's like, uh, yeah, I can't relate to that at all. It's not that that exact path happened to me of like being a musician and then not wanting to be a band teacher. So then I got into web development. Um, Yeah, I got a chuckle. As a dad, like, I try to tell him, like, yeah, you're going like try to have a a point of where you're going to go, but know that it's probably going to change on you and it might change at least two more times in your life (laughs) just from my own experience. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Travis, it's been great to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on to talk about bedrock and um, your background and um, yeah, we'll see you around. 
Thank you. Yeah, and it's, it's a pleasure. I really appreciate you inviting me to come and talk to you. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Anytime.